Now I want to talk about the story of one of the actors, a part of the mega hood classic movie, Boys in the Hood. I am confident many of you have seen the movie Boys in the Hood. I myself watched it when I was younger. And one of the most memorable parts of the movie has to be when the character Ricky Baker is taken out in the alleyway. You know, that that is probably, that is most definitely the most memorable movie. I mean, the most memorable part of the movie. The scene shows this actor hanging out of the car. He pulls out and then he blasts Ricky in the back and they scream the famous line, Ricky, you know, this is a famous scene. And even though the actor who takes out Ricky wasn't that famous, what happened to him is highly suspicious and strange. The actor that played the knucklehead number two in the movie, which is the person who takes Ricky out, was named Lloyd Avery. Lloyd Avery was a young actor who had several small roles in a few other movies, like he was in Poetic Justice and Don't Be a Menace. Lloyd's story is very interesting because it appears that he grew up in a good family. He was a part of a good family household, like they had everything that they needed. They lived in the suburbs. But after he acted in the Boys in the Hood movie, he moved out of his family home and then moved into a neighborhood that was ran by gangs called the Jungle. He moved into the middle of the ghetto to act like he was ghetto now because he was a part of a movie where he had to act like he was from the ghetto. So he, he himself would eventually join a gang and started committing crimes to climb the ranks. Even though he wasn't from that environment, he was from a good family home. He had a, a good promising future ahead of him. Lloyd became the character he portrayed in his movies. He would eventually be arrested for taking two people out in a drug deal gone wrong. So he actually took people out in real life. He took people out in the movie and then went on to take people out in real life as well. He was sent to prison after this and he was sent to life in prison in December of the year 2000. He was found guilty of all of the crimes that he was convicted for. The only thing that came positive out of this is that it said while he was in prison, Lloyd found Jesus and turned to God and became basically the local prison preacher. He tried to guide others who have made mistakes like him to find Christ and redemption, which is a great thing. You know, we see that often where people end up going to prison and they turn around, they start giving their lives to God, they start preaching and start helping, you know, other people, other people see the truth as well because they themselves have found the truth. And that's actually a good thing. A lot of people like to make fun of these people, but it takes you being at your lowest point to realize that you are going the wrong way. And if you can honestly make a change and turn your life around, you shouldn't be demonized about that because you made mistakes in the past. You should definitely be honored and rewarded and people should respect you for it. And that's exactly what he was doing in prison. In prison, Lloyd was known for his devotion to God. And it went so far that they even started calling him baby Jesus. He was, you know, always preaching in the jail and in, in prison. Sadly, when it appeared Lloyd was making progress and had made changes, the most disturbing thing would happen to him. In 2005, while Lloyd was serving his time, he would be introduced to his new cellmate, an inmate that was referred to as the Satanic Christ. Literally, his name was the Satanic Christ because he was a Satanist. They had introduced Lloyd, or baby Jesus, to Kevin Robbie, otherwise known as the Satanic Christ, and they put them in the same cell. And sadly, it did not end well at all. According to reports, Lloyd was trying to convert Kevin into Christianity, and it would not end well for him. As Kevin decided that he was going to use Lloyd to send a message to God. On September 4th, while Kevin and Lloyd were unattended, Kevin would attack Lloyd and then ritually offer him to Satan. He said he sacrificed him to send a message to God. This, all of it, it just, it seems so strange to me. It made me feel that there was more to the story. It was actually one of you guys who recommended in a previous live stream that I speak about this. And he actually went over on Discord, commented on the Discord for me to look into it. And I looked into it and I'm, I'm glad I did because this situation just doesn't make much sense to me. And it's, it's very eye-opening. Hollywood seems to be corrupt. And we know that. You know, Lloyd was a good kid when he got into Hollywood. But he didn't end up a good kid. Somehow he ended up on the wrong side. He ended up becoming a gang member. He ended up leaving his, his good family to become an actor in Hollywood and then also to become a gang member because that's who they had him playing. When he did everything he did and he paid, you know, he, he did all the crimes he did. He ended up getting arrested. He, the devil truly took over his life. That's when he found God. He found God at his lowest point and he became a preacher at that point, trying to get his message of, you know, to other people that were in the same situations as him. 
And then it appeared that right when he was working for God, that's when the devil attacked him. You know, that to me was very interesting, especially if you think about it in prison. Why would they put a person that was known as baby Jesus, as a person that was spreading the gospel, a person that was trying to help others see God in the same cell as a someone that was called the satanic Christ? Someone who was known for the complete opposite. It, it, it almost, in my opinion, appears that someone in that prison system wanted this to happen. Or something much darker ended up happening to Lloyd because at the end of the day, you guys tell me what you think. You think that this was just a coincidence that they just happened to put these two people inside of a cell together, all coincidentally, and then leave them alone for enough time for this man to do a whole satanic ritual on him. That doesn't make any sense to me. That right there speaks for itself, and I believe that he was targeted for whatever reason. Honestly, if you think about it, this could be directly connected to his Hollywood you know, career. Maybe he took the oath for that Hollywood career, and when he tried to turn his back on that oath, when he tried to turn his back to God, you know, he tried to turn his life around to God and turn his back on the devil, that's possibly when they saw him as a problem. Because I don't understand why else. It, it doesn't make sense. This is what had me the whole time thinking. I, I said, what would be the purpose of them allowing this attack to happen on him? It just doesn't make any sense. If this is something that happened so long after, it, it wouldn't make sense for it to be connected to his acting career, but then for it to be directly tied to the occult, for it to literally be a, a Satanist that sacrificed him, that to me blew my mind and it spoke for itself. What do you guys think? You think that he was set up or do you think that it was just wrong, you know, wrong time, wrong place. It, it does happen, you know, it does happen sometimes, but are, are we really going to be that ignorant when it comes to a situation with a Hollywood actor? Not necessarily a big actor, but he was still a part of the Hollywood system. And out of nowhere, he ends up sacrificed in prison. I don't think that's a coincidence whatsoever. You know, and, and I, I feel that he was taken out for the purpose of turning to God. But he definitely had an important role in the Boys in the Hood movie because it was one of the most memorable parts. So many people remember that part of the movie and it's what's memed and it's what's all over the place. So the fact that he's the one that's in this part, he's the one that ends up becoming a gang member and all this and then ends up in prison being sacrificed when he turns to Jesus. That just doesn't make sense to me, you know? The story is very suspicious and interesting to me from the moment that I saw it. It definitely poses the question of what truly happened that day. And it also poses the question of if he was set up, was was the guards in, in it? Who was involved? How was this able to happen? It's the same thing like when we think about the Jeffrey situation or also the Aaron Hernandez situation. These people, the way that they were able to be taken out in prison, it just doesn't make much sense. Prison is one of the most secured, guarded places in the world. We have security we have um the cells we have the cameras everywhere everything is set up so that if something does happen in prison it'll be able to be recorded and it could be you know seen and it, it doesn't go unseen but the, the thing is it usually when situations like this happen where like the jeffrey situation where it was a high profile situation where it involved someone who was definitely a part of this occult system ends up being taken out the same thing we're seeing with with Lloyd. Lloyd was a part of Hollywood because he was getting these Hollywood scenes, regardless of what kind of scenes they were, whether big or small. He was getting these scenes and he was being put in this position to win. He could have eventually become the next star or the next anything if he would have kept playing by the role. But the thing is, he gets himself arrested. He turns to God. He turns away from the devil and then everything goes away. And that does not just everything, but they come after him at that point. You know, it's, it's very interesting to me. And I, I'm, I should possibly make a full video on this. If you guys would like a full video on this, let me know below. I just want to give a special shout out to the Truth Movement members. I truly appreciate every single one of you. If you'd like to further support the channel, join the Truth Movement. Or you can join me on Patreon where I drop exclusive videos monthly. The link would be in the description. Another way you can further support the channel is by checking out the Truth Fist store and seeing if you find anything you like. Every purchase you make goes directly to helping the channel and furthering Truth Records.
Also, please leave a comment on your thoughts below and on any future topics you would like to see me cover on my channel. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when I drop new videos. If you like this video, please leave a like as it helps other people find these videos. You can also find me on TikTok and Instagram and follow me there for more truth. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.